Earlier on, we described kinetic friction, and when I introduced kinetic friction, I also introduced this idea of another frictional force that was between two objects acting before uh, one is moving against the other, basically re resisting the start of motion, even when there's a, a pushing force applied. That force is called static friction. Again, static friction is the frictional force between two surfaces that are not moving along each other. Static friction keeps objects from moving when a force is first applied. You can see that from our diagram over here. And again, just as before, what we, what we essentially have is the roughness of the two surfaces interacting with each other and basically just kind of locking at that point just before enough force is applied to, to break it loose and allow it to start moving. Now let's take a look at the formula for the static frictional force. It has a form that is very, very similar to that for the kinetic frictional force. Here we have frictional force is less than or equal to the coefficient of static friction times the normal force. The structure is basically the same. A coefficient of friction and the normal force are related to the, the frictional force. However, here, what we'll notice is that there's an inequality. We'll talk about that in a moment. One thing to note is that the coefficient of static friction, just like that for kinetic friction, is different for every pair of surfaces. The important thing about this equation is the less than or equal to symbol. What's important here is that the force of static friction is always equal to the applied force on the object. So the more the applied force, the greater the uh, force of friction. In other words, it matches the applied force, keeping the object from moving. So imagine. You're pushing on a box until it moves. You can apply a small force, nothing happens. You keep applying more and more force, and as you apply more and more force, the frictional force, again, is exactly equal and opposite until you hit a point where you apply enough force that the box finally starts to move. That's the maximum amount of static friction. That is what the coefficient of static friction times the normal force represents. So friction can be less than the maximum amount or equal to the maximum amount, but never greater. The force of friction is equal to the coefficient of static friction times a normal force at the instant it starts to move. But then what happens? To get a better understanding of how the static frictional force works, let's have a look at the graph that's um, displayed here on the right. What we note is that as the applied force increases, the frictional force also increases. In fact, it's exactly equal and opposite to the applied force. Because it's countering the applied force, the object that's being pushed or pulled is unable to move. So as the applied force increases, so does the frictional force until we reach this maximum, where the frictional force is equal to the coefficient of static friction times the normal force. When you get to that point, that maximum, the object begins to move. And suddenly, we move from static, a static situation to a kinetic situation, and the coefficient of friction becomes the kinetic coefficient of friction. And the frictional force becomes a constant. It no longer varies with the applied force. It just depends on the normal force. Um, again, the normal force just multiplied by the coefficient of kinetic friction. So at this point, the applied force can increase, but because, this, because the frictional force is fixed, the object is able to accelerate. Earlier on, we showed you a table of coefficients of kinetic friction. And here we want to present a similar table showing you the coefficients of kinetic friction alongside the coefficients of static friction. The patterns from material to material, 
are pretty much the same as they were in the solely kinetic case. Certain materials have much lower um, coefficients of friction than others. But what's important to note here is that the coefficient of static friction, which we see here, is always somewhat greater than the coefficient of kinetic friction. Once the coefficient of static friction is overcome, once an object begins to move, you can see that it's easier to keep in motion because this coefficient is always less. The kinetic one is always less than the static one. Here's an example involving static friction. A four kilogram brick is sitting on a table. The coefficient of static friction between the surfaces is 0 0.45. What is the largest force that can be applied horizontally to the brick before it begins to slide? Let's look at the information that we have. First of all, we know the mass of the object, four kilograms. And secondly, we know the coefficient of static friction is 0 0.45. We're looking for the largest applied force before the object can begins to slide. So I'll just write down the information we have. We have the mass is equal to four kilograms. The coefficient of static friction is 0 0.45. And we are seeking the maximum applied force. Now, again, let's recall that the applied force, as long as the object is not moving, is exactly equal to the force of friction. They're countering each other. And we know that the force of friction, the static friction, is less than or equal to the coefficient of static friction times the normal force on the object. The normal force, we'll recall, is always equal to mass times the acceleration of gravity, that is the weight of the object, uh, when the object is on a horizontal surface. So if we substitute this in, we find that we have the applied force is always less than or equal to the coefficient of static friction times the weight of the object. Until the applied force actually equals the coefficient of static friction times the weight, the object won't move. And just at that point, the maximum that can be applied just before it moves is when this is an equality. So the, the number we're looking for is the applied force is equal to the coefficient of static friction times mass times acceleration due to gravity. We'll plug in all of our numbers. The coefficient of static friction is 0 0.45. The mass, 4 kilograms. And the um, acceleration due to gravity as we know, 9.8 meters per second squared. When we put this in a calculator, we get 17.64 newtons. So the maximum force that can be applied before the object begins to move is 17.64 newtons.